What is going on everybody? Nick here and I actually just pulled up to the house where the boat is um, because I'm taking somewhat of a last minute trip over to the Bahamas in a couple days. Um, the owners have some stuff that they need to run over to their condo which actually just finished getting rebuilt from Dorian. It took a whole two years um, and they didn't want to have to pay to fly it so they're just having me run it over on the boat. Um, and so I'm going to take you all along with me as I get the boat ready and do all my checks and whatnot um, to kind of cross over to the Bahamas. Um, I'll show you all what goes into that. Uh, so stick around and when I get down to the boat, I'm going to pick this back up and show you all what I'm going to do. All right, so we're here on the boat now. Um, and the first thing that I'm going to do is check the oil in the motors because that's the most important. If I lose a motor in the middle of the ocean, I mean, I have three more, so it's fine, but it's not ideal. Um, and so the first thing I'm going to take the cover off, take the cowlings off. And that's kind of a pain because if you know anything about this generation of Mercury Verados is that they're great motors, but the cowling is, is a you know what to get off and back on sometimes. Um, so let me do that and then I kind of show you how I change, check the oil on them. Your little brother never tells you but he loves you so You said your mother only smiled on her TV show You're only happy when your sorry head is filled with dope I hope you make it to the day you're 28 years old You're tripping like a saturated sunrise You can see here that I only have the two center cowlings off um, And the reason for that is because these mercury cowlings, the latching mechanism, um, there's a stainless um, cord that connects the actual mechanism to the handle um, and that's stainless however the little grommets they use to secure that um, cable at the end is not stainless it's just regular steel and so this is a saltwater boat over time that little grommet it rusts out and then the latch just stopped working so I currently cannot get this one off and cannot get this one off without actually unscrewing and taking that mechanism off but I'm not going to do that right now um, because I don't have any more of those stainless cables to put on it. Um, she's due for service in about 10 hours though. Um, and so when, when, when we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and replace all the cables and all the cowling so this doesn't happen. Um, I'm not too worried about it because um, the boat's running fine right now. This is more so just precautionary. Um, you know, it's a risk, but at least we'll have to know for a fact that two motors are fine in oil and are not going to break down. And you'll also notice here that on this motor here, I had to take off the back cowling and that's because both of the cords, the stainless cords on that back one have come off. Um, so I learned that one the hard way. The last time I took, I took that cowling off, I took it off and the entire back because nothing was holding it on anymore since the cowling was off, just fell off into the water. Um, and then I had to go fishing in the canal, this dirty canal to get it. Um, so let me go ahead and check the oil in those center two motors. I'll walk you through how to do it. Um, and then We'll move on to the next thing, which is probably going to be checking safety gear. And you probably noticed that the boat is an absolute mess right now. And that's because the owners of the house just had all the palm trees trimmed today. And so all the sawdust uh, got on the boat. And so tomorrow I'll be washing that before we leave in two days. So that's that. All right. So the first thing we are going to do before checking the oil is tilting the motor all the way up and down again and it would help if i turned the batteries on one second all right so as i was saying now that the battery is turned on we want to go here and lift the motor all the way up once it's here let it sit for a couple seconds and then we're going to bring it all the way back down and then we can check the dipstick So here you have the dipstick right here inside of this lower cowling um, and that I'm going to have a hard time checking while recording because I have I only have two hands and I need both hands for that. So so what I was saying is that you want to take that dipstick all the way out, take a paper towel, take a paper towel or a rag or a shop rag, whatever you have, wipe it clean, put that dipstick all the way back in and then bring it all the way back out without moving the motor. And wherever that oil falls on the dipstick, you're gonna know how much you have. There's a section on the dipstick that's a little bit serrated. I'll show you all kind of what I'm talking about. Ideally, you want the oil about halfway up that. Um, these Mercury's, generally they're pretty good at keeping oil. They don't really burn or leak much. Um, although I have had times where it's gotten down below the thatch and even down once where it was below uh, the entire dipstick. But I'm not kind of anticipating that because the boat really hasn't been run hard since the last time that it was checked. 
Um, I kind of show y'all what I mean with the serrations here before I actually check it. Um, and then we'll get to um, actually adding any if we need it. This is what I was talking about on the dipstick. If you look, there's the bottom of it coming up, kind of you have the serrated kind of cross hatch. Um, ideally you want the oil about halfway up that. Once it gets below the cross hatch, it's getting low, you need to add more. And then if it comes all the way below the dipstick, you need to add oil bad. All right, so you can kind of see here that the oil is just below the cross hatch on the dipstick. So that means that I'm gonna have to add more oil to it. Um, you add right here in the back of the motor where that yellow cap is. Um, it's not gonna take much, I don't know, maybe quart or so. Um, I'll probably start with a quart and then add more if I need it, but let me show you all quickly how to do that. This is the oil that I need. I have four gallons of it here, and then I also have four more on the boat, but I'm gonna use up this what I have before I use up my emergency reserve on the boat. Here in the boat box, my funnel should be in here, and there she is. We have everything we need, let's get to filling. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is unscrew this oil cap right here without dropping it in the water because I only got one of these, I have no spares. And I really don't wanna go swimming in here right now. All right, so that is off. Let me put that on a paper towel so I don't stain anything. Stay. Awesome. Take your funnel, pour it in there. And then next up, it's pretty easy. You're just gonna take your oil and pour it in there. I'm gonna do that off camera so I can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, you can see that's how much oil I have left in the bottle. And you saw before where the oil was in the cross hatch. Um, so I'll show you how much it took to get it back to the middle of the cross hatch. All right, so you can see as of right now, I put in about half of what was left. I'm gonna check to see where that got me um, and then add more if I need more. And when you check, you have to be sure to take the funnel out, put that oil cap back on, trim the motor all the way up, let it sit for a couple seconds, then trim it down, take the dipstick out, wipe it down, put it in, and then check the oil. Do that every time you wanna check the dipstick just to ensure that you're getting a proper measurement. All right, so you can see that adding about half of what we had left got us, I don't know, half inch to three quarters of an inch up into that check and so i'm just going to add a little bit more to get it a little bit towards the middle um and then call this motor good i'm probably won't even check it again because it's already in the clear in that check hash whatever you want to call that serrations um i'm going to go ahead and finish that do the other motor it's an identical procedure and then i will get back with y'all and then probably go over safety equipment so as i mentioned i'm just going to add a little bit more oil to this motor to kind of get it more in that middle range um, I'm not going to check it again because it's already in the safe operating range. Um, finish that. I'll do the other motor off camera because it's the same procedure. And then I'll get back with y'all and probably go over safety equipment. All right. So the cowlings and covers are back on the motors. Oil is checked, um, at least on two of the motors. Again, I'm really not worried um, about the other two. As a whole, these Mercs are extremely reliable. They don't really burn that much oil. Both are pretty full. Um, and, you know, worst comes to worst, say... Worst case scenario, we lose both of those outside motors because they get low on oil and have low oil pressure. Believe it or not, this big old beast will play in on two motors, um, especially we have Humphrey um, interceptors, which are fancy trim tabs. Um, and with those, I will play on two motors. It's not fast and it's not efficient, but she does play. In. So now that we're done with that, we're gonna check our safety gear real quick. And the first thing is to check the life raft and make sure everything looks good on it and that it's in date. So as I said earlier, just ignore how dirty this boat is right now. Um, once I finish going through everything, I'm going to spray it off to get this dust off. But up here in this cavernous center hatch is where we keep our fenders and my life raft. Um, when the boat's just kind of sitting around, we use it for other storage. Uh, other times, let me get down in there. All right. So here we just have a basic little portable life raft. You can bring it up. When I cross, I keep it on the deck right there, just in case anything happens, you know, I, it's there to use. Um, and you, I don't have to be digging in things. So the easy thing you can see here, the service date is not due until 2020, February, 2024, it looks like. So we are more than good there. So February, 2024 is when the next service date is on this life raft. So we are perfect. I don't have to worry about that at all. Um, and so now we're going to go on and check the ditch bag, which includes the flares, 
um, the e perb, all that good stuff. So um, let's get there and we'll move on. Oh, one thing to note too that I'm sure y'all have noticed is how nasty this gutter is. And that's all that palm tree crap from them cutting the palms today that got in here. It rained a little bit. And so the, the rain washed it in here and turned it into a mush. And to be honest, while I should clean that out right now, um, I have better uses of my time when I'm leaving for the Bahamas in a couple days. And so that's probably not going to get cleaned until either after I get back or when I have some downtime over there. Um, cause that's just a tedious process that, um, is not a great use of my time right now when it's limited. So let's move on. All right. So here we have a ditch bag. Um, it's an ACR ditch bag. Um, they make these pre-made ditch bags that you can buy for a couple hundred bucks online. This is what this is. So I want to make sure that we have all everything we need to be legal and to be safe in here. And so the first thing that we're going to look at is the e -perb, which is in here. And I cannot stress this enough about this dish bag. If you even are thinking of going offshore and on your boat, you need at the very minimum an e -perb, but you need a ditch bag. Invest in one. If anything ever happens, God forbid, your life will thank you. All right, so here's an e -perb. And basically what this is, is God forbid a situation happens where the boat sinks, so you go overboard. If you flip this switch here all the way over, um, it's gonna immediately alert the Coast Guard and um, rescue authorities of your location and will continue to do so every 10 minutes for the next several days so they can get someone out to check you. And so what we're gonna do is a check to make sure it works. As you can see, I have it out in the open sky. You're gonna flip this switch halfway up. If you flip it all the way up, it's gonna set it off. But halfway up and there's a light in here and it should blink six times, which means that this e -perp is good to go. All right, so you can see that little green light flash six times. And then on the sixth one, there was a white flash. That means that this e -perp is good to go. And if I need a situation, it's there to save me. All right, so here is what we have in it in here. Some of it is required, some of it is not. This is not required. This is a radar reflector. Basically, you can put it up and it's gonna show you way more bright on ship's radars. If you're stranded, so they can come get you. Um, we have some emergency first aid supplies and we have an entire first aid kit, but this isn't an emergency should this ditch bag be the only thing that you have. We have a ditch bag. We have a whistle, a sound making device, which is required by law. And then the most important thing that's required by law is flares. And so the major thing with these is that you want to make sure they are current and not expired. So here are all of our flares. We have an assortment of a bunch of different kinds, way more than what's required by law. And that's just because we want to be safe. Here we have a bag of ones that do not expire um, until April 2024. So these are good for quite some more time. These actually expire next month, but we keep them on because, you know, should they still work, we want them there. These two are still good. And then we also have a flare gun in case we need to shoot it in the air, which it basically is a 12 gauge shotgun shell, but a flare. And so both of these are good until next year, the bags, four packs. And these four are expired. However, we keep them in here because there's a chance that they still work. And if that's the case, you know, we want to have every precaution that we can. And you see in our boat warehouse, we have buckets and buckets and buckets full of expired flares. And that's just because over the years when you have, you know, at one point this owner had nine boats or eight boats at the same time. And so when you have that many of them, you know, these things expire and we just keep them all the time because again, there's a chance they still work. And so keeping a couple of those expired flares on you is not a bad idea. You have to have ones that are current for legal purposes and for safety purposes, but keep some expired ones. You know, if they work, the more the merrier. All right. And the last safety um, thing that I'm going to look for today is just life jackets. And I'm kind of just looking... Um, more or less for the sake of looking, I know that I have enough. I keep 24 life jackets on board because um, when this go, goes to the sandbars and the islands, it, it gets loaded up with a lot of people sometimes. So you can see here, I have four of them right here. And if you look under here, down underwards, I have, um, I think six more of the, or five more of these bags of four. So plenty enough life jackets. Um, there's only two of us going, it's me and a friend. Um, and so I only need two, but I have 24. The more the merrier, you know, if we do sink, we have a lot of flotation. We'll make an island, who knows? <laughs> but um, that, and then you also wanna make sure you have your throwables. I have two of them. You know, you never know when you're gonna need them. 
Um, I also just want to make sure I have my first aid kit. I do. It's right here. Um, I just opened it up. I'm not going to do it on camera because I'm just making sure stuff's in there. There's nothing fun about that. Um, there's that. And then the last thing is fire extinguishers and um, other, and you know, air horn, noise maker, whatever you want to call it. And so I'm going to make sure we have those. And then we're pretty good to go on a safety front. And then from that point, you know, it's just making sure that the boat itself is ready to go. It's clean. You always want to make a good first impression um, on anyone over there, especially me. I work in yacht sales. First impressions are everything. Um, and yeah, make sure the systems work. Run both GPSs for a while. Check, test the autopilot. Test the radar. Um, test the depth sounder. Anything I'll need, just test the system. Make sure it works before we leave so I can get someone out here tomorrow. If it doesn't work, get it fixed and be ready to go. And so uh, let me go find those other safety things and then we'll test all the systems. Um, so that is really it for the safety equipment. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I need to test all the systems and make sure everything's working properly. Um, but I'm gonna do that tomorrow because it's getting dark here and I wanna get home for dinner. I'm hungry. Um, so I'm gonna do that. I also need to fill the boat up, but I might have the other lady who helps me take care of this boat, Connie. Um, if you've ever seen Below Deck, there was a season where there was a female deckhand named Connie. Um, She's the one who helps me take care of this boat. She lives here in the same town as me. Um, and so I might do that Friday afternoon if she can't tomorrow, but chances are she's gonna do the fill up for me. Um, and then I'll test, do all the testing and running tomorrow. I'll bring y'all along, but in the meantime, let me get this clean and I will see you tomorrow. All right, everybody, it is the next day. Um, you can see I'm out on the boat right now. Um, I'm just testing all the systems. Um, there's really not much more for me to do besides test the systems and then pack the boat. Um, the boat was filled up this morning um, by Connie, as I mentioned earlier. It took 200 gallons, so not too much. Um, so I'm going out right now, making sure you know the GPS works, autopilot works, radar works, AIS works, um, bilge pumps, all the systems. Make sure everything's good to go so that we have no surprises when we go. And you can see I'm running here. The screen's working, radar's working. I'm on a heading hold autopilot right now, so that's working. Once I get out around the Dragon Point here in Melbourne, I'm gonna go ahead and test, um, uh, because if we go to a waypoint, you know, make sure all that stuff works. It's raining here, as you can see. We got a nasty storm blowing up, so check the radar, make sure it's picking up the rain and everything. Um, and then because of the storm, I'm not gonna stay here for too long. I'll take a little bit of me running. Um, then I'm gonna turn around and come right back in and get to packing, and if it's not raining, um, I'll start packing today and bring y'all along. Um, if it is raining, um, I'll probably pick up tomorrow and start packing then. So enjoy this running footage and I will catch up with y'all either tonight or tomorrow. Trim tabs are working, trims working, motors working, radar working, GPS working, uh, autopilot working, um, all the good stuff. It's all working. We're good to go. Um, it's not raining yet, so we're going to go ahead and put the boat back and start packing now. 
Um, we have a decent amount of stuff. It's not a ton. I'll show y'all um, exactly how much we got. But once we get to the dock, I'll pick it back up. What is going on, everybody? It is the next day. And um, as you can see, I have the boat in the water hooked up to shore power. I'm going to have it in the water because I'm going to run the refrigeration on the boat all night. And um, to run the, the cooling pump, it needs to be in the water. Um, it doesn't have, that pump doesn't have to be running. It just gets really hot in there if not, and I want to keep it as cool as possible. Um, it probably is going to stay in the bottom a little bit more than it already is, but oh well, it is what it is. Um, so today, we're going to pack. Everything's pretty much done on the boat. It's full. We've checked everything. Everything works. It's serviced. Um, we have a bunch of stuff in the house. I'm going to bring it out, put it on the dock to show you all how much we have, and then show you all kind of how we played Tetris on the boat to make everything fit. So let me go get that, and we'll be back. All right, so we have everything here that we're taking. Um, you see, we just have boxes of miscellaneous stuff that you would have in a house if you had one. A little bit of drinks, not too much. The owner's only there for about two weeks. Some furnishings, a toolbox, a bunch of bedding and stuff. So you can see it's not a ton of stuff. Um, I've done trips with significantly more stuff than this, um, significantly more weight as well. I did one where I had to bring over, you know, 12 golf cart batteries along with like four ceiling fans for the place. And, you know, it's because they have two golf carts over there and they were just furnishing the new spot. So um, this is really nothing. Um, when it comes to packing out on the boat, you have to worry about your weight distribution. Um, not a ton, you know, in a big 20,000 pound boat with 40,000 horse, 1400 horsepower. Um, you know, weight distribution is not huge, you know, but you still want to worry about it. You want to keep all your weight to the center of the boat and right around the center of gravity. Um, lucky for us, this boat has down here, let me show you. When you come down to the console, you're looking aft, you have all your controls, your battery switches. And then under that, you have this big cavern of storage that goes all the way back and your batteries are actually back in that, uh, behind that door over there. And so what I'm gonna do, is I am going to take all of that out, uh, find a new spot for it, because this life jackets is really all that's down there. Um, find a new spot for all of that, and then I'm gonna shove as much as I can down there, because that is directly center line and on the center of gravity. So it's gonna make everything real easy if I can fit it there. It's not really gonna affect my performance much. The boat's not gonna list either way. Um, it'll be nice. So I'm gonna take all of that out and pack as much as I can down here. And looking at how much I have, I actually might fit it all down here. Um, this is a lot bigger than you think it is. Um, so let me go ahead and get to that and I will um, get back with y'all when I finish to let y'all know how it goes. All right, we are done here. Um, we just packed up the boat. We got everything in there. Um, believe it or not, we fit just about everything down in here. I'll show you what I mean. Oh. Up in here. And this goes way all the way back as I showed earlier. And so we fit pretty much everything in there, which is exactly what I want because that's what the center of gravity is. Um, and it's center line as well. This big hatch here, we also fill with stuff because we had a big box. You can see it down there. We put some of our life jackets in there. The toolbox is down there. And then also in our cleaning compartment here, I also put all my wine bottles in the back there and then sandwich them in with bags and the first aid kit. And so you can see that we're pretty much finish on that front we have everything we need i'm gonna pick up some fishing rods tonight um in case we come across a pallet or a boat or something hopefully get some dolphin when we get over there we're gonna hope to get some lobster um i think we're good i do want to show you all one thing that i did which i think is going to be pretty cool here i've never really used the routing before on the gps um but i decided for this trip that i'm gonna try the routing i have it on the bottom chart now what I usually do is I usually just waypoint it all the way down. But you can see I literally made waypoints all the way from our dock out, out down the river. And I tried, I zoomed in as close as possible to get it down by the bridges. And then once we get through the islands over here, you know, here's the turn at Spanish. This is where we're going to clear customs. And then going all the way down, I have it all the way to Treasure Key. And so I've never worked with the routing before. My goal is to see if I can get all the way to um, treasure without touching the steering wheel one time when I leave the dock. Um, it's going to be very bold to uh, to accomplish, but we're going to try it. We're going to see what happens. 
Um, if it's cool, I'm gonna save the route. We're gonna keep using it every time across. Um, but I'll pick this back up once more tonight. Once I get everything ready and completely crossing ready, I'll say goodbye and then I'll make another video of our actual trip to the Bahamas. So uh, thank y'all and I will see y'all around. Good morning, people. It is Bahamas day. Um, it is currently 4.30 in the morning. We're here bright and early. Trying to get out of here by, I don't know, five o'clock-ish. Um, I wanna be on the bank uh, by sunrise to be first to customs there at Spanish and you know, have still have a full day in the Bahamas over there. Um, the boat's pretty much ready to go. I'll show you what we did last night. We went and loaded up with several hundred pounds of ice. Oh, right here. Bang. And then this cooler and the one in the back. Those are filled up with ice as well. Um, that's because we have quite a lot of refrigerated and freezer goods that are going that I still have to pack. Um, this boat has refrigeration and chill plates, but I blew an inverter and I need to replace it. I have the new one and just haven't replaced it yet. Um, and so I was able to run it off of shore power last night to get everything cold. Um, I added ice last night so we didn't lose any ice overnight. And probably actually got more freezing, which ice can't do, but you get the point. Um, yeah, and so we're going to finish loading up the frozen goods i'm waiting for my friend jason to get here and then we're gonna head out um and so once we leave the dock i'll catch up with y'all and run you through the crossing
Give him a glass. Let's get yours. Right. 